Hi, your next challenge is called Speed Control. This is in the 7 Caillou series. In John's car, the GPS records every S seconds. The distance traveled from an origin. Distances are measured in an arbitrary but consistent unit. For example, below is part of a record with S seconds equals to 15. So consider this array that they have here, right? All of these values in here are positions in um, that the car has traveled. So it starts at the starting point, obviously it hasn't traveled anything, so you get zero. And then the next entry represents 15 seconds later since S is 15. And 15 seconds later, they're at 0.19. And if it's helpful for you to think of that as miles, go ahead. Kilometers, go ahead. Um, they clearly don't want to deal with any kind of conversion. So that's what this bit in the parentheses is about. They're just saying, we don't really care. Think of this however you want. We're not going to um, meddle with the details of that. Not important here. Let's focus on other stuff. So yeah, uh, you go out another 15 seconds. You get to, say, half a mile, then three quarters of a mile, a full mile, etc. Uh, th then they call the sections, quote unquote sections. Um, you could just think of these as distances traveled. That's a better way of describing it. But obviously, it's the distance traveled from the first point to any next consecutive point, right? So the first one, they traveled 0.19. Um, and then from 0.19 to 0.5, the distance traveled would be 0.5 minus one, 0 0.19, right? And so you can um, think of it like another array with a collection of distances traveled at each point. And then since you know the amount of time it took to travel each of these distances, you could calculate the average speed for each of those. So in the final form, you've got just a, a list of speeds. So given S and X, they call the distances collection there X. We'll change that, that's a terrible name. The task is to return as an integer the floor of the maximum average speed per hour obtained on the sections of X. So I don't think that's worded well, but all they're saying is, is what I said before, you end up with this final collection of speeds. They just want the, the biggest one, the maximum. If X length is less than or equal to one, return zero since the car didn't move. That makes sense. We'll add some protection for that, that the X array doesn't have any values in it. Um, and so they said the example above should return 74. And note that 74.4 is the largest value, but since they want an integer returned, um, you're going to provide the floor of that, or you could simply truncate that value, in which case you end up with just the 74. Note, with floats, it can happen that results depend on the operation's order to calculate hourly speed. So yeah, I know some of you guys have busted my chops in the past because you don't like math heavy problems. This seems more math involved than it is. They even give you the, the formula here to calculate um, speed. So I, you know, I think, think you guys got this. Little math won't hurt you. It's good. Put some hair on your chest, right? So anyways, the, uh, the 3600, if you're curious, um, you can imagine that there are 3600 seconds in an hour, right? There's 60 seconds in a minute. And there are 60 minutes in an hour. So if you take 60 times 60, you get 3,600 seconds per hour multiplied by the distance traveled and divided by seconds. So it's um, 600 um, seconds per hour, right? There are 3,600 seconds in an hour times the distance traveled and you're dividing by seconds. And so you can see what happens is that you've got uh, seconds in the denominator. It will get canceled out with that seconds. And so, um, I'm sorry, I had that backwards. Let's, let's do that again, just so, I'm, so you're following me. Um, divided by seconds. So you notice you got a seconds in the denominator. You got a seconds in a numerator here. 
those will cancel out and you're gonna basically have this factor times a distance over hour and if you think of distance over hour is another way of saying distance per hour or miles per hour kilometers per hour um, if you cared about the math behind that if you don't don't worry about it you just have your formula so anyways go ahead and pause the video come on back when you're ready we'll go over two solutions I'll give you one with link and then if you want to stick around and, and look how we'll do this without using any fancy link stuff we'll just do it that way too so to get started we'll do the link one first since I'm going to do that I might as well bring in system link right now good um, first things I told you I hated this name X here let's call it distances and um, S is the time interval right in seconds uh, I'll leave it as S I suppose for seconds you could change it to something if you like okay good let's do that check to make sure that distances is populated they warned us about that right if distances dot length is equal to zero right they told us just to return zero because the car didn't move anywhere there's no values it didn't move there's, therefore there's no distances good okay next I'm going to start um, let's start transforming our data right in the instructions we saw how it went from distance markers to changes in distances to speeds and let's start working on something like that uh, you know by now we use this select link method for um, transforming collections uh, projecting the values into different values right and that's exactly what we want to do here so let's go ahead I in I'm sure you've seen me before I've done this where I include the index you've got overloads for select right so you can actually include the index like you would get if you were going over a, f a for loop right and I'm gonna use that here to sort of get the distances between data points so um, let's call the value from here that represents the distance I'll call it distance right that's any one of these original values here right because we're in the distances array the original array and then I'm going to add that index we have an overload where we could use the index as well so that's my parameter list right and closed in parentheses because I've got more than one of them if there's only one parameter parentheses are optional and I'm gonna have a compound statement here often when we use these lambdas we could just write a little bit here right on the same line and this might be nice if you want to see what it looks like hey what if I have multiple lines of these things so let's do that okay so we're going to look at distances and for the first part of the transformation I want to go from this kind of thing to this kind of thing right where I'm getting these differences to find out the amount traveled at each point and I, I'll think of that as um, Delta X um, we can call it that that's a common term in math right Delta just means a change in values right I'm sure you've seen Delta X and Delta Y if you were you know on a Cartesian coordinate system and looking at points and um, you know you had two different points and you're looking at how far apart their X components were and Y so I'll just kind of use that language there so Delta X at any point I'm going to initialize it with the distance to start um, because you'll note with the first value right there is no previous value we're at the start there's nothing back here so in that case it's just going to be whatever's in there zero um, but you can imagine as we go on we want to look one behind and I don't want to look one behind for the first value right that would crash out of bounds of this array so don't do that okay so to enforce that I could say if index is greater than zero right that means there is a previous element and I could say uh, Delta X 
um, minus equals, which just means I'm subtracting from it, right? We learned about that shorthand. I'm going to say distances index minus one, right? That means you're, let's say we're on the second value. That means we got 0.19 and it's saying subtract from that uh, the distances value from index minus one. Index is one, one minus one is zero. So you get this value. I'm taking 0.19 minus zero. Good, and so on, you know, 0.5 minus 0.19. So I think that's clear. We've got a, a, um, a distance now at this point that was traveled in that section. And then uh, finally, let's get a speed based on that distance traveled. So what I'm actually giving back, you know, you can think of it like I'm not even making this collection here, right? I'm going right to I just want the speeds, right? That's essentially what I need, and I need to find the biggest one. So um, let's let's calculate the speeds. They gave us the formula for that. It was 3,600 times the, um, what do we call it, delta x, and divided by the seconds value. And if we want to follow their note, we can put this in parentheses, you know, I'm not sure if it will matter or not, but it doesn't hurt. Um, multiplication and division are the same order of operations, right? They, they're at the same precedent level, so they would just fire off from left to right. So um, yeah, we'll include them. So anyways, for each element right now, we're getting what we're actually returning here is the speed. So that once we this select finish returns or completes, it returns an I enumerable, right, of doubles where they now represent the speeds traveled. So we've got that collection, this collection, when it finishes. But we're not quite done, right? We have to return an integer containing the max value. But that's pretty easy at this point, right? So uh, I think you probably have a guess on how you could do that. And so, you know, you could say call max, right? We've seen minimax on that collection itself. And again, if you're uncomfortable, you can break these out into separate statements. I'm kind of chaining everything together. Um, and we'll, we'll break this down in simpler terms if you want to stick around for the second solution too. So at this point, we are, um, we've got the max speed, right? Where we, um, but we, let's store it somewhere, right? Right now we just have the collection select. Um, it made our collection of speeds, it took the max. Well, you could store that somewhere if we want. We could say, um, I guess I usually call these results, right? So now that max speed is stored in this result. We need to make it as an in. And again, you could, you don't even have to put this in a separate statement, right? You could wrap this whole thing up if you want, however you want to do it, you know, whatever looks good to you. And you could do um, int result. I'm just using a C style cast here. Um, you could also use, we've seen the convert class, right? To int 32, should be the same kind of thing. But I'll go ahead and run this and see what we get. Oh, I went right for the attempt. That's okay. Okay, good, yeah, we're green. So um, it shouldn't have mattered if you wanted to do a C style cast instead. This should be the same thing. Yeah, and you'll notice too, I, I suppose it's worth pointing out that um, at the end here, you notice in the language of the, of the challenge, they said to return the floor, right? The floor of the maximum. And so I didn't 
invoke the math class's floor function, which we've also used, it just rounds down all the time. Um, you sort of get that same behavior by converting a double to an integer. It just truncates all the, the decimal, the fractional part of the number. So it's the same kind of result. You could use math floor too, if you wanted to do that. That math floor though returns a double, so you'd still have to um, convert it to an integer. But yeah, you could do it that way if you wanted it to read like the problem statement read. Um, and then again, I don't, you don't even have to make this another line, right? You could say return um, distances select max vert to the int right here or wrap that whole statement up in the um, convert to int32 like we did before. Let's try it like this. See, it's the same thing. It's just, you know, depending on how much you scrunch it up and combine it all together, it can become less expressive and less clear what you're doing. I'll let you be the judge of that however you want to um, separate these out into separate statements. It's up to you. Good, so we did some link magic there. If you're comfortable with that and how you would solve this problem uh, sort of on your own manually, not using link, you can stop here. Um, if you're not sure, I encourage you to stick around. Let's do another really simple, um, this will be a short, simple example. We just won't use link. And then uh, I'll probably come back to this. I'll submit it as link, but let's just, do another one. And you know what? This um, this protection bit is still good. We want, we still want that. But let's do it without link, just so you kn make sure you know how to do this kind of thing on your own. So we'll just use a basic for loop to go through i equals zero, right? You know this. i is less than distances dot length, semicolon, increment i, to find the scope of our for loop with the curly braces, good. Um, and so let's just do this, you know, gently step through it a little bit at a time. We could say double distance, right? And it's the same idea. Remember, if we're at index zero or i equals zero, there's no previous element. So that's the only special case. I'll use our um, ternary expression here for that. If i is equal to zero, right, um, then I just want to use the value, which will be the zero, distance is i. Otherwise, we want to take the current value minus the previous one, right? Distance is i minus distance is i minus one. And so for this, you know what, if you want to, let's just call it delta x, you know, x is often used for position, and that's what we called it in the other solution. I'll just try to keep the language consistent there, right? So once you have your delta x, the distance traveled, you were provided s, the number of seconds for each interval. And so we can calculate a speed on that. And I'll just go right to integer for my speed. And so how do we get the speed? Well, we had that formula they gave us, 3600 times um, delta x over s, right? That was our speed. And then um, the way, so what you could do if you wanted, it's a little bit overkill, you could make an array, right? And start loading up all these speed values, you know, um, speeds array, speeds index i equals this speed and load them all up and then call max on them like we did down here. But you know what I'm gonna do? make it even simpler. I'm just going to say int max equals negative one, just like an invalid speed, right? And so what I'll do is now, whenever I get a speed, I'll say if speed is greater than max, max equals speed. We're just updating the value each time, right? We don't need the whole collection. We'll just keep updating. And then by the end, we'll have the max speed. And then yeah, we're only going over a collection once instead of doing that length twice. So good. 
Um, after that, you could simply return your max, right? Let's go ahead and run that. So we get an error on line 16. Cannot convert from double to int. That's fair because delta x is a double, right? So when you mix integers and doubles, the result comes out as a double. So this whole bit here um, is a double. So let's inf let's say no, 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 no. You're gonna be an integer. Let's do that. Okay, yeah, green again. So um, really simple. I mean, this one's so simple. I might actually submit this one because you know again, right? Um, I was talking about not going through two collections of the same size, which is like going through the collection twice, but we created this um, collection of speeds here, right? And then we call max on it and max got to go through the collection again. So I might actually submit my homegrown solution. Let's do that. Nothing fancy, right? You don't always have to be the fancy link guy. Maybe we don't get all the upvotes when we submit. That's okay. Someone else can be sexy. We're just going to be right and efficient. So yeah, um, we have this little variable to keep an eye on the max while we're going over the collection once. That way we don't have to go over it again. We're getting the delta x between each element in the array. We need a distance, right? And once we have a distance and a speed, they provided us the formula. Um, you can get th that uh, speed per hour value that they're looking for, a velocity here. That's how they described it. Seconds traveled from an origin. Yeah, average hourly speed. And so that was the idea here. Um, I think this is pretty straightforward. I tried to break that down as simply as I could. But you know what to do if you have questions. Go ahead and hit me up. Let's go through and um, be sure to collect your honor points, though. Let me know where you're at in the comments, too, if you've built your um, honor points up a bunch. So good. Yeah, I'll go ahead and submit mine like this. And then, yeah. See what you can learn from other people. Some more link stuff there. See what else you can learn. Hit me up in the comments what you like, what you don't. Um, hopefully that wasn't, I don't get more complaints about math problems. <laughs> no, that's okay. You can sound off about whatever you want. And uh, otherwise, I'll see you in another video. Thanks for watching.